Hello, cool. in this video I want to put everything together um, by actually going from this data to a tree like this using the agglomerative clustering algorithm. And so the strategy is actually pretty simple. I start with a bunch of points and I keep combining similar nearby points until I end up with a cluster. So maybe the first thing I do is I see that these two are close to each other. So I group those two together. Um, next I might see that these two are close to each other and these two are close to each other. Um, and then at this point, uh, the next thing I'm going to realize is that the closest thing is this group to this individual, right? So I'm not necessarily just grouping points with other points, but eventually I start grouping um, clusters with other points, make even bigger clusters. Next, I'd probably turn that into a cluster, and then finally I would get one big cluster um, at the very end. And so I think this raises the question, well, what is nearest? And, uh, and so if I'm trying to look at the distance between two clusters, how can I... How can I tell, right? And so one option is that I could say, um, I could say between any two points, well, uh, within the cluster, what, what is the distance between the closest two? Right, that's kind of a best case scenario. Um, that's called single linkage. I could also do um, complete linkage, and then both these examples, the distance between these two clusters are the two that are farthest apart. Um, there's other versions, I could say, um, the distance is, well, what would the variance be if I were to merge them? Um, the one I'm going to be doing in the programming example um, is the average, right? So I'm going to take these two, um, these two clusters, and I want to say, well, what is the dis distance between them? I'm actually going to take every combination of points between the two. So, for example, if I have three clusters in one and five on the other, there's 15 um, combinations. I'm going to see, well, for each combination, what is the distance? And then I'm going to take the average of that and that'll be the uh, distance I'll be dealing with. So I'm going to come over here back to my um, back to my notebook, and I just copied my uh, my node down to here for demo three. And for this demo three, it's the same as last time so far. And uh, at the bottom, I'm currently creating this tree um, by by hand and then drawing it. And what I want to do is I want to just start with my data, right? Uh, not have any cluster nodes, and then see if I can figure out how to automatically um, add nodes to turn this into one big cluster. So the first thing I have to do is I'm gonna have to have some way to tell the distance between nodes. And so I wanna be able to have some sort of call like this where I can say a.distance to b and see what that is. And of course that, that fails because I haven't implemented the distance function yet. So I'm gonna say define here um, distance and I'm going to have myself and then another node, right? So when I call this, A will go into self, and then B will go into other. And then I can try to get the distance between these. And so I have basically self.data, which is a NumPy array. Maybe I can just print both of these actually um, as a starting point. I can say self. Uh, I'm sorry, other.data. And I can run that. And I can see, okay, well, I have these two things. And if I want to get the distance between these, I'll take the Euclidean distance. I'm imagining that this is the x, and this is the y. And so how will I do that? I'll say uh, self.data minus, um, minus other.data. And, um, and so I can see, well, I have along one dimension it's that far, and along the other dimension it's this far. To get the Euclidean distance, I'm going to square each of those pieces. Right, so now I have 9 and 0. Then I'm going to sum them all up like that. So I get to 9. And then finally, I'm going to take the square root. All right, so that's just the equation for taking the distance. And the distance is 3, which seems about right. So I mean, I guess the y values are the same. And then this x value is 3 to the, to the right. So that's the distance. And it turns out that this is the Euclidean distance, even if I were to have more than two coordinates, if I were to have 3 or, or 100 or whatever. So that's the distance between these. And, um, and so right now I'm just gonna return it. Maybe like that. Okay, so that seems good. I think the, the challenge will be is if I wanna have another node like this, let's say I, I go back and I take one of these for now, or I have one node that's a combination of, of other two. So if I have this and I wanna say, well, what is the distance from Y to let's say C? Right? Well, it doesn't work because this is a cluster node. It doesn't have any data associated with it. I'm getting this none type error. And so this is the point where I'm going to have to, when I want to do this, 
uh, I'm going to have to say, instead of just taking like the cluster to see, I'm going to take every point in here and, uh, and compute the distance to the, every point in C and then take the average of those. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use this um, function that I had last time where I, I could get a list of all the nodes. And I want to just get the children nodes, or not the children nodes, the leaf nodes, because the leaf nodes are the ones with the data, right? So I'm going to, down here, I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say nodes one equal, maybe I'll call it leafs one, equals an empty list, and leafs two equals an empty list. And then I'm going to say um, self dot fill node list. And then here, what do I need to pass in? I need to pass in um, all the node lists, and then, well, what am I looking for for the children for each of those nodes? Um, so first I'm going to fill in leafs one. And I only want to have one that ones that are leafs, right? So that means they don't have any children. And I think that was leafs one and then leafs two. And, and I guess this one is other, right? So I'm getting all the leaf nodes from my two different clusters. And then I can really look at every combination of those to get a distance. So I can say something like this. I can say something like um, for node one in leafs one, for node two in leafs two, um, I can I can get the distance between those, right? So I can say distance equals this thing. And then it's not self and other, but it's all well, these node one and node two. Okay, so that'll be my distance. Um, and then, well, what I want to do, so I'm, I'm computing all the different distances for every pair. And maybe for now, I'm just going to print these things so I can see what's happening. Right, so I, I can see that um, first I get the distance from uh, one point in Y to C, and then I get the distance from another point in Y to C. So I'm going to add all of these up into a big list, and so I'm going to say distances equals a list, and I'm going to append all of these there. Distances dot append that, and then I can return the average of those. So I'm going to return the sum of distances divided by the length of distances. And so I think that should turn out to be 4.5, and it is. Okay, great. So I have a way of, of computing the distance between a cluster and a point, or maybe a cluster and another cluster. Okay, so we're going to be using that to try to, um, to, try to construct this overall tree. And, and so the strategy that we're going to work with is we're first going to, and maybe I'm going to do this in a separate place down here, is first off I'm going to start with a bunch of trees. And, um, and I'm going to have a set here. I'm going to say I, ha I have an A, a B, and a C. Those are each trees and that they all have one node in them, right? So, uh, you know, each cluster is a tree. And so my strategy is among these three, I'm going to find the two that are closest to each other, and then I'm going to pull them out of here, out of this set, and join them into one bigger tree, right? These two are, let's say I find that A and B are closest. A and B are going to be siblings under a new um, under a new tree that gets added back into here. That's the that's the strategy that I'm trying to do. So it's going to be something like this. I'm going to say um, while length of trees is greater than one, I'm going to keep doing something, right? Because my goal is eventually to have one giant cluster that keeps breaking down to subclusters and subclusters. So all that, I want to find the best pair of these. I'm going to say uh, for tree one in trees and for tree two and trees. And I'm going to just say if tree one equals tree two, I want to skip that, right? I want to uh, try to merge a tree with itself. That'd be a little bit silly. All right, so I'm going to do that. So I have these two different trees, and I can get the distance between them, right? I can say tree one dot distance to tree two. Okay, just like that. And maybe for now, I'm just going to have a break here so I can just see what's going on with that. So I'm going to say the distance equals this, and I print that off. And I should get six distances because I'm doing every combination of, of these um, of these trees, right? So I can go through each of those. Maybe I'm also going to say, um, what is tree one? What is tree two? And so I can see that the best merge is a distance three, and it's either going to be BA or AB. It doesn't really matter. Those are the same. All right, so what I want to do is as I'm going over each of these, I want to keep track of the best distance I've seen so far. And so I may say that this starts off at none. And then if I find a better distance, right? So if distance is less than best distance, then my new best distance is this. 
And so that's one possibility. And then on the first pass, right, if this is the first one I've seen, this equals none, right? So if it's the first distance I've seen or I found a better distance, update it accordingly. All right, so then when I'm all done, at the end of this loop, I can print off, well, what is the best distance? And the best distance is three. Now, I'm also interested in knowing what those two trees were, right? So when I do this, I'm gonna have, you know, best tree one equals tree one, and best tree two equals tree two. And so when I'm all here, done it here at the end, I'm gonna say, well, what is my best tree one and best tree two? And I'm just gonna delete all of this. And at the end, I see, well, I wanna merge these two because they only have a distance of three. Okay, so now I'm in pretty good shape. I found the information I want. I did the hard part so far. And so I'm gonna create a new tree and that's gonna be a node. And with nodes, they have to have a name. So I'm gonna come back to the name. And then what else? I need to have a left and a right, which are gonna be my two trees that are near each other. These two trees were pretty close to each other. And then the distance will be, will be whatever the distance that was that I had. And I don't pass any data in. Uh, does it matter what the name is? Not really, I can name it anything. It's not gonna show up on any plot. Um, I think I'll give it some sort of name based off of how large this is because that's gonna keep counting down. So I'm just trying to call this something like um, cluster and then maybe here I'll say whatever the length is remaining. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. And so let me think about what I need to do here, right? So I'm creating this new tree. I wanna remove the old tree, so I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna say trees.remove tree one and trees.remove tree two. And then at the very end, I wanna put this new tree. So I, so I get rid of two small trees and I add back one bigger tree. All right, so I'm gonna say trees.add that. And then when I'm all done, let me see what this is. Um, why, why can't I remove that tree? I don't have a, um, so I'm seeing that somehow node A is not in here. And, and I think that's because, well, this was the one I meant to remove, right? This best tree one and my best tree two. Um, so I'm gonna do that. And, and maybe I'm just trying to say what my merge is in each case, right? I, well, I guess I can see, right? I can uh, merge node A and node B, and then I merge node C and then my cluster one. And when I'm all done, I get cluster zero at the very end. M maybe like the easier way to see this is I'm gonna print off my trees here and also after I'm all the way done, I'm gonna print off my trees here. And so I can see how it evolves, right? I start with these three clusters, each of one node, and then I have two clusters, I have one cluster at the very end. And so if I want to, I could have, um, I could have, well, this is the root of my tree, right? I'm gonna convert this to a list and pull that out. Then I have this down here, and I, and I was able to create this cluster. And if I want to, I could say, draw hierarchy on it like that, and then I can actually see that picture that I've gotten before, right? So I was just kind of iteratively um, doing this bottom up. I keep merging smaller trees into bigger trees until I just have one big tree at the end, and I have all of the, all of the distances. So let me go back to the slides briefly. Um, I want to talk, well, even before that, I want to talk about um, uh, the agglomerative clustering, and I'm not trying to do any examples. Of course, I just want you to be aware it's out there. There's a bunch of settings here, like, well, how, how do I determine what the distance is? Um, for the linkage, I just gave an example of average linkage. I, I think I mentioned some others. There's some other settings here, like number of clusters, and then also um, a distance threshold. And so I just want to talk about what those are. Those are two very important things, the number of clusters, the distance threshold. You're only going to use one of those. And the question is, well, when do you stop merging? I, I stopped merging when I had one giant tree. But in general, people have other options based on these two um, settings. One thing I could do is I could just say, well, I want exactly three clusters. And then when there's only three clusters left, it will stop. And I, I just get those three at the top. Uh, what does that look like? That would look like if I said instead of, well, length is greater than one, I could have said, well, it's greater than three. And then I'm guaranteed to end up with three um, kind of top level clusters at the end instead of one top level cluster. Uh, people might also say, um, I have some sort of distance threshold. Uh, even if there's only like say two clusters left, if they're too far away from each other, we never want to join them into one uh, bigger threshold, right? And so what would that be like? That'd be like in the code, if I checked what this um, best distance was, right? I could say something like, you know, if best dist distance is greater than some threshold, 
then I could break out of this. I'm not going to do that. Right? So I could, though. And then the final option people will do is I'll just say distance threshold equals zero, and then you're always guaranteed to get this one giant tree, um, which is analogous to what I just did in the demo.